bees. To most people, they're simply pesky little insects flying around, with their sole purpose to hurt anyone that gets in their way. But what many people don't see is how much bees contribute to our daily lives. The watermelon we're able to enjoy on a hot summer day. The coffee we consume each morning to get us through the day and the strawberry jam we spread on toast that we eat for breakfast are all things we take for granted. But do you ever stop and think about where all of that comes from? Bees. The truth is, although they can be annoying nuisances, these umbrella species actually play a huge role in our everyday lives. If bees are protected, then so are we. To put into perspective just how important bees are to our daily lives, at least 30% of the world's crops and 90% of our wild plants depend on pollination to survive and thrive. Furthermore, many plants such as alfalfa, which feeds our farm animals like cows, also depend on pollination by bees. Through pollination, bees produce one third of our food. Over $15 billion worth of plants and crops in the U.S. are pollinated by bees. Additionally, honeybees also produce $150 million worth of honey each year. Pollination is the process of bees feeding on nectar while transferring pollen from plant to plant. Pollination not only benefits bees, but also the plants. This process continues to help reproduce plants. This is called a mutualistic relationship because both organisms benefit from the other. Because one bee isn't enough to provide for the whole colony, after a bee finds an area with an abundance of nectar and pollen, they go back to their colony and notify all the other worker bees through a dance called the Waggle Dance. The Waggle Dance is a system the bees develop that tells other bees exactly where the plants with the pollen are. When the worker bee waggles, she is communicating distance and location of the pollen-filled flowers. A worker bee will shake her body around, always facing the same direction. By doing this, she is directing her hive mates in the direction of the flowers. The amount of time she dances indicates the distance of the resource. A half second of dancing is equal to a half kilometer of flight required to reach the source of food. Unfortunately, bees all over the world have been vanishing at an alarming rate. This decline in bees is known as colony collapse disorder, or CCD. With bees, our ecosystems thrive with the producers being alive and well, which translates to healthy consumers. Bees provide stabilization to the entire food web. Without them, the plants would all die out, which would then lead to the death of many consumers who depend on the bees' pollination to survive. The global phenomenon pertaining the disappearance of bees from their hive is called Colony Collapse Disorder, or CCD. In just one year, beekeepers all around the United States have lost around 33% of their honeybee colonies. But what's causing all these honeybees to die? Scientists have been conducting extensive research for years, but there isn't a single explanation for CCD. There are many contributing factors to the disappearance of bees, but one that has affected over thousands are parasites. A particular parasite known as the Varroa destructor is one of the bees' greatest enemies. The Varroa destructor is a danger to the entire colony. First, the female mite enters the beehive and lays her eggs on the bee larva inside the cells. This has to happen before the larva pupates and before the hive bees cover the cells with wax cappings. After the eggs hatch, the mites feed on the developing bee, severely weakening it. The bee, however, still has enough strength to claw out of the wax capping. However, by freeing itself, the bees are actually allowing for the mites to roam free and spread out through the entire hive, infecting the entire colony. Outside of the cell, these disease-carrying vectors also suck the fluids out of the bees, which also weakens the bee. Additionally, the mites transfer diseases to the bees, possibly causing severe birth defects such as useless wings. This symbiotic relationship is called parasitism, which is when one organism hurts or kills the other organism. This cycle repeats every 10 days. The mites' population numbers grow exponentially, and after a few months, the entire bee colony collapses. Over the years, certain insecticides have been developed that are harmful to bees. 
Neonicotinoids is a synthetic insecticide developed in the 1990s. It was designed to replace many older, more harmful chemicals such as DDT, the specific insecticide that was banned in 2001 because of the possibility of very dangerous effects on both human health and the environment. However, because it's synthetic, all parts of the plant will absorb the insecticide, making the entire plant harmful to bees. The insecticide attacks the bee by targeting its nervous system. Unfortunately today, it is the most widely used insecticide all over the world. In 2013, neonicotinoids were used in about 95% of all corn and canola crops, and on a variety of fruit crops such as apples, cherries, and peaches. Bees are affected by the insecticide while collecting pollen from the crops. When they bring the infected pollen back to the colony, it'll spread and eventually kill the entire colony. If a bee consumes a large enough amount of insecticide at one time, it can immediately lead to paralysis or sometimes death. Even in small doses, they can still have a dangerous effect on the bee. The insecticide may lead the bees to forget how to get back to their colonies. If this happens often enough, the beehive will lose its ability to sustain itself. Another possibility for CCD is habitat fragmentation. By definition, habitat fragmentation is when an organism is unable to access its preferred habitat. In the bees' case, habitat fragmentation is most likely caused by stresses added to their environment due to human interactions. Humans are slowly destroying the natural habitat that the bees need to survive. Industrial agriculture plots overlap the bees' natural habitats. Humans are destroying the natural habitats to allow for more land for industrial agriculture. This has a massive effect on the bees because without their habitats, they have no place to savage for food and nowhere to set up their colonies. CCD needs to be cured if we want to continue living with the privilege of having a variety of food choices. A large part of our lives are dependent on bees and CCD poses a serious threat to the entire human race. Today, scientists all over the world are working on cures for possible CCD symptoms, such as bee probiotics, robot bees, and many other things that can possibly save the bees. There have been a lot of new discoveries each day, and we're getting closer and closer to finding a cure, but there's still a lot of work to be done. CCD is a huge problem to the natural world, because bees preserve the natural beauty and stability of all ecosystems. Without them, many of the living organisms we know of today wouldn't exist. Although CCD is a very serious issue, there is very little scientists can do. Scientists are working towards a cure, but the cause is still unknown. The use of insecticides such as neonicotinoids has taken an overwhelming toll on bee populations globally. There are several substitutes for this highly dangerous toxin, such as organic farming, crop rotation, and polyculture. If more people used these natural ways of farming, the population of bees would have a chance to rebuild. Rather than using insecticides to keep the pests away, we can use non-toxic solutions to eliminate them while keeping our bees healthy. Planting marigolds and feverfew around vegetables and flower gardens will eliminate pests due to their strong odors. Varroa mites are external parasites that essentially live off of honeybees. Early detection of varroa mites can be treated with a product called apicin. Apicin will kill the varroa mites and cause them to drop from the bees. Two strips must be hung in the nest area above the colony for four weeks. Sticky paper and a fine mesh screen should be used with apicin to attract mites in the colony. Apicin can be used long term and will show no residue in honey, so beekeepers can still use the honey that their bees produce. Strips are not to be used during honey flows because the honey can be contaminated and be unsafe for human consumption. Apicin can slow down the development of varroa mites and reduce the number of resistant mites. While scientists are working on developing permanent cures to CCD, there are many ways regular citizens can help. For example, we could replace parts of the grass on our lawn with bee-friendly flowers. This would provide food and habitat for bees and other insects. 
Highly hybridized plants would not be a good choice for our gardens because they have been bred and will produce very little pollen for bees. Leaving a patch of the garden in a sunny environment would provide a resource for some solitary bees to burrow. To add, a bee bath would provide a place for bees to get the fresh clean water that they need. In order for this to work, you would need a shallow container of water filled with pebbles or twigs to land on as they are drinking water. The water would have to be maintained in order for them to know they can return to the same spot daily. If you live in a home without a garden, there are still things you can do to help restore the bee population. You would only need a small plot of land so it could be anything from a windowsill to a rooftop to create an encouraging oasis for bees. Creating and donating to charities can help save bees around the world. Theoretically, if we had the money necessary, we would create a large contained ecosystem, fill it with undiseased bees, and let them repopulate for 30 years. Then, release them all into the wild where they can reproduce. Although these aren't permanent cures, this can help lead to the repopulation of dying bees. The bee population is decreasing faster than ever, at a rate in which we cannot afford. This loss of bees is in need of appreciation, awareness, and support. Colony collapse disorder continues to affect many hives, which leads to the disappearance of millions of bees. The cause for CCD is still unknown, but something needs to be done. Our lives are deeply connected to many other living organisms, and if we don't take better care of our surroundings and the natural organisms who inhabit those areas, we are essentially corrupting our own lives. Although these tiny little insects may seem like nothing, the contributions they make towards our lives are irreplaceable and fundamental in securing our own survival.